Hey, this is Joel Duff. Welcome back to my channel. Um, not the usual fare for this channel. A little something different. That's why it's Duff Talk Stuff, because it's just other stuff. Kind of unrelated. Although, this does have to do with communication. This is my frustration with social media and, and how we interpret messages. All right. Subliminal messages. Maybe very straightforward messages sometimes. But... Um, I've got a little puzzle for you. All right. And the puzzle is, well, here it is. It's, it's not, it's sort of a chess puzzle. I'm big into chess. And so I was interested, you know, this caught my eye as I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw this image and um, I wondered, what is that all about? Right. So it says the, 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 the soul line attached to this by the person who posted this. I'm not going to tell you who posted it right now. Um, I will give you more information about the background of the image later, but I want you to look at this image and tell me what do you think the person who posted it is thinking? What's, what's their message? What are they trying to communicate? Put another way, if this was a, a piece of art at, a, at, a, at an, um, an art museum, right? And you wander up and you're like staring and you're like, what does that mean? Like, and obviously the... The author of that artwork wanted to evoke some kind of emotion, some kind of some kind of message to. They wanted you to think something when they saw this image. So I'm asking you, what do you first think when you see this image? What do you think the author is conveying? Right? And the, the tagline here is one of the lesser known variations of chess. I don't want there to be too much dead space here, but I needed to give you a moment to think about what you're looking at. Uh, I'll make some very general observations for you. I, I'm try, not trying to influence you in any particular direction, uh, but so you notice that there's this, uh, this knight, it's actually on the A2 square. And, and of course the knight should be back here, but there's a pawn back here. And then if I look down the, the row of pawns on the second line, uh, we see that the pawn in front of the king is a different pawn from like from a different chess set all right so there's there's three irregularities on the white side of the board or the the light colored um, pieces and then we've got all the the dark colored pieces all right um or the brown pieces and they're all inside of a canoe all right it's a hide skin canoe and um every single one of those pieces is in that canoe so what do you think? How would you interpret this? What, what do you think the message is of the person who is who posted this image? Right? They post the image, one of the lesser known variations of chess. Now, I'm going to tell you what I thought. I'm going to tell you exactly just what I thought. I saw it. Something immediately came to mind. And I wondered, am I being fair? All right. Am I misjudging this person's motives? Um, and so I shared this image with several friends, right? Uh, and a wide variety of friends, multiple different friends that have different relationships with me, uh, and come from multiple different backgrounds. And I asked them, you know, without context, right? It's a, it's a picture without context, just like, here's a couple words, here's an image. What does this conjure up in your mind? And most of them came up with the same thing that I did, right? They had the same thought that I did. That thought was, um, this is a message about either immigration. Uh, it's a statement about uh, maybe um, white supremacy. I mean, after all, the chessboard represents, you know, the battlefield. And you can think of the chessboard as being the world or a country for which you are trying to overtake the king uh, of the other side for complete control of everything. Uh, in this case, the dark colored pieces are just packing it up and leaving, right? This is the measure like, hey, look, the white pieces, we have this land now and the dark pieces need to just leave. And they get on their boat and they leave, just like people get on boats and come to this country, right? This isn't your country. You need to leave. You need to get out. That's the message that I saw when I when I saw this chessboard. And I think, is that unfair? 
know, is that just, uh, do you look at me and you say like, oh, you must come from a background where, where that's the type of thinking you, you're, you're, you're all, I don't know, woke or something like you, you think about race a lot and you, you, you see into everything racial, racial imagery, all right? Or is, was there another message that was supposed to be imparted here? I, because this is to me suggestive of sort of white nationalist, white supremacy, um, a, a kind of a take on it. All right. So now I need to tell you more about the author because I did see who posted this. And so possibly the reason I immediately jumped to this conclusion is because of who I saw posted it. Right. And this is the, this is the issue I have with, with social media and, and the way that discourse happens on the internet these days without sitting down and talking to somebody uh, and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation and being able to understand their motives, simply shown pictures. This particular person posted this picture, simply left this comment here and never responded to any of the comments back. All right. Now, first thing I wondered was, I mean, I told you what my first thought was when I saw this, but then I thought, you know, maybe it really is just about chess, right? It is. It is after all a picture of a chessboard, and the message is like the actual words of the message say, ah, oh, a lesser known variation of chess. Maybe it's some joke on some chess move or some chess opening. Now I know a lot of chess openings. I know the names of the chess openings. I, I have to admit, I sat there and thought maybe there's some sort of, this is a really clever take on some particular chess opening. I thought maybe the King's Indian opening, right? Because they're in a, they're in a hide skin boat. And yes, I've done a little research. I actually looked up this toy canoe and uh, I found out that, that it is a Native American toy canoe that sold as a Native American uh, canoe. Um, and so I thought King's Indian defense. Well, I, I, I know the King's Indian defense and it's not putting the knight on the A2 square. All right. It's actually moving the knight to the A3 square. Uh, I'm sorry, the, 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 the C3 square, um, early on. So I don't really know what's going on with the misplacement of the white pieces and placing a knight on a, a like on a more forward square to begin with. I don't know what the subliminal message there is. Oh, Joel, you, you just, some kid just set this up right in someone's house and they were just having, they were just horsing around and having fun. And they just happened to set the board up this way. And, and, uh, this person came along and took a picture of it and they're like, look at my kids. This is a lesser known chess variation. Right. And so it really is just about chess and kids and there's no other message. There's nothing else to be learned from this. There's no secret messages here. There's no dog whistle here. There's no, there's no underlying like thing that I'm trying to impart to you, but I can't really say it out loud. Like I might get banned from Facebook if I, if I say what I'm really thinking. So that's another possibility, right? This is, I've just got all fooled by this and this is nothing but a simple childish thing. Uh, and there, there is no meaning here. Well, I think that there is meaning. All right. I think this is like a piece of art, there's a message behind the obvious, just simple interpretation, right? There's a deeper meaning to this. I say that because I know who posted this, all right? And because I know who posted this, I know what other types of things that this person posts is that they don't post anything randomly, all right? They just don't. Everything that they do has some purpose. It has some meaning a number of ulterior motives in this person's postings, right? They are sending messages to others in other posts. And so knowing that, obviously I'm going to look at this image in a different way than if it had been posted by say, one of my friends that's really into chess and likes to post chess puzzles and, and all kinds of chess oriented things, right? If I had seen that from that individual, I would have complete, I would have started with a completely different first impression, right? I wouldn't have looked for this deeper meaning. I would have asked myself, well, what is this person really trying to say? All right. Yeah. On this chessboard. 
I would have just taken it for like, hey, this is a uh, this is a, a chess puzzle that I need to figure out. Like, what is he trying to say about these people? What what interesting thing about you know Magnus Carlson just played something that I would have done done some research and seen like what somebody had said and they were trying to portray what somebody said in the chess world. No. I completely skipped that byline. I do think that this person actually likes chess and probably plays some chess because he thinks it's an intellectual game and makes him seem all intellectual. Um, uh, but I don't think this is a, a, I don't think that this picture is about chess. Um, yeah, so here's, here's who posted it, um, Toby Sumter. He's a pastor. Uh, he's a pastor of uh, Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. I got a couple other images, but let me, let me just keep on this theme of like thinking about the intentions. All right. The, the subliminal messages that, that people sent uh, on Facebook and social media. So Toby Sumter, I think, I think he actually does play chess is interested in chess. But as I said before, I don't think this is a chess message. I looked at the comments under this, right? I mean, I, I you know, I'm interested in whether I am falsely accusing Toby Sumter of basically sending sort of white nationalist messages, all right, and or an anti-immigration message uh, through this. And I look at the I look at the feedback from it. Now, a number of people made some funny comments about chess. Now, I think that they're just individuals who just don't see that like there's a deeper meaning here and they're they're struggling to come up with some kind of like funny witty thing to say about this uh, in response to the picture. But one response was preach it, brother. All right. Well, then, preach it, brother. Uh, why would you say that in response to one of the lesser known variations of chess? Now, when I looked at that person's profile, okay. I looked up, you know, I went a little deeper. I looked at who said preach it brother. And I looked at his profile. I looked at his Facebook postings and I discovered that this person's on the far, 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 far right edge of things and almost certainly interpreted this image as an anti-immigration uh, policy. All right. Some kind of, you know, white superiority, uh, um, interpretation. Um, you know, the fact that I came up with that same interpretation, I, you know, it's kind of embarrassing, like almost like I'm thinking just like that other person, but in a way I'm, I am coming to this conclusion because I am, well, I'm opposed to those who have these particular views, uh, but I follow many of them and I hear this type of stuff all the time in some of my circles. And so I'm really sensitized to it. And so that's the thing that I thought was like, I'm just like overly sensitive to these kind of subliminal messages being sent around within groups of individuals who all are like-minded. And of course they read these things this way without actually having to say the words uh, on the internet. And so that's one of the reasons why I sent this to other, other folks without any context. I didn't tell them who posted it, right? I didn't tell them why they posted or where they posted it in some cases. I just said, what do you think when you see this picture? And then I showed them like what the, you know, what the, uh, one of the lesser known variations of chess and sure, you know, a couple people that I gave it to tried to think like, well, what are they talking about? Like what chess move are they, I think they, they purely took it on the face of it as like, this is just about chess. Great. I, I think that's wonderful. That, that person is in a sense, naive, you know, uh, about it. That they're just taking it very simply. I kind of wish more people were like that. Um, but many, many, many of my friends, all right, uh, of, again, of different political persuasions, different backgrounds, different ages, essentially came to the same conclusion I did in terms of what the probable message of this particular image is. So let's talk about Toby Sumter a little bit more. And let me give you an idea of why I was so quick to come to certain conclusions upon seeing this picture. All right. Uh, so I mentioned he's a, he's the pastor of Christ church in Moscow, Idaho. Well, I've just talked about Moscow, Idaho, not too long ago. I had this rather inflammatory, uh, provocative, uh, title to one of my recent videos, Ken Ham host Moscow cult. And of course the Moscow cult wasn't Moscow, Russia. It was Moscow, Idaho. And I was talking about Toby Sumter and Douglas Wilson 
and a number of other individuals who are on a very powerful organization in Moscow, Idaho area and have a whole bunch of satellite churches around this country. Um, and I called them a cult. I mean, part of that was to be somewhat provocative, but I also think that, uh, that they check off a lot of the boxes of if you would have like a list of cult-like features. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I just want to give you the idea that I just want to give you the sense that I have a certain impression of this particular group, having been in and around this particular group somewhat uh, in my past. So in addition to being a pastor, he runs this uh, Fight, Laugh, Feast network and has a YouTube channel along with a couple other hosts. Uh, and they are having a annual conference, uh, which is going to be held at the Ark Encounter. And so that's what my other video was about, that Ken Ham is hosting, all right, or at least renting out his facility, uh, the Ark Encounter, for this uh, Fight, Laugh, Feast 2023 conference, uh, which is titled The Politics of Six Day Creation. Yes, they're going to sit around and talk about politics as it relates to their belief in the world only being 6,000 years old and how that affects their politics. Um, yeah, namely, that you know, they're interested in having a, a you know, in, in the U.S. becoming a theocracy rather than a de democracy, just to put it most simply. But you'll see there we've got what is one of the featured speakers. We've got Toby Sumter, right? Toby Sumter, Ken Ham, Doug Wilson, and all these other folks are all of them associated somehow with, with uh, Moscow, Idaho. This is one of the reasons I was fairly quick to interpret Toby Sumter's uh, Facebook post in this fashion. But I said thinking, thinking about it later, and I'm, I'm trying to be as charitable as I can. All right. I'm thinking like, is this just me being biased? Is this me seeing things in that? So let's go back to this image once more. All right. And let's, I want to think about it a little bit further. Um, I started thinking, what are some other interpretations, right? What if I hadn't thought of that interpretation first, that this is a anti-immigration or, or, or white supremacy sort of, uh, image, right? That's the subliminal message here. And I thought, what else could it be? And so I'm looking at the comments. There was one other comment, person who commented this who said, and they had a uh, Athens versus Sparta question mark. And of course, they're talking about Greek wars between Athens and Sparta. And one of those is a, a sort of a naval power. And the other one is better on land. And I thought, you know what? That kind of could make sense, right? It could be like, this could be a message of saying like, because um, I, I know Sumter and all of them, they're into, um, you know, history, right? Really big history buffs. So maybe this was some kind of history lesson, right? It's supposed to represent one group that's the that's that's good on land and they're going to march forward but the other one's a naval power and they're going to use their boats like so like maybe maybe the maybe the variation of chess is they're going to use the boat to come around the other side and then attack from the back or from the side or something like that off the chessboard off of the land which kind of the chessboard represents right so i can come up with like just like a piece of art not knowing necessarily what the author's intent was, but only having the image itself, I could come up with alternative interpretations, right? And sometimes an, a, a piece of art is, is, is generated in order to elicit those different kinds of responses. The artist isn't necessarily going for one particular thing. They, they want the person viewing the art to do the interpretation. But many times, right, the artist has a, a definitive goal in mind. This is what I want to elicit in that viewer. Um, and I would think that Toby Sumter is, is, is wanting to elicit a particular message uh, in this particular case. But, but the people that are responding are maybe seeing other things in it that he did never intend it. And of course, Toby Sumter never responded to any of these comments. Right. And so that suggests he's leaving it open to interpretation. But in my mind, one of the interpretations I have of his lack of correction, like, oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. Here's what I meant. Is the fact that he doesn't really want to say in words out loud what he really means. If my interpretation is right, he's not going to say, yes, your interpretation is right. I was tempted to actually leave my own comment and actually suggest this as an interpretation and then see if he would correct me. But the thing is, even if he corrected me, I wouldn't necessarily be convinced that he doesn't believe it, right? He simply might have to correct me so he doesn't allow that to be seen in public 
that this is a this is the interpretation I think he is he is is seeking for. Right? So he's kind of trapped in a box this way. There's very little he can do to kind of convince me that I'm wrong. Right? You might say, why don't I just ask him? But if this is his interpretation, if this is his subliminal message, if I'm right about his subliminal message, then even if I were to ask him, even privately, probably, he's probably not going to admit that. He's just, it's easy to have plausible deniability, right? This is what we see on the internet all over the place now. This is, this is the whole idea behind the dog whistle, the other messages that can be denied because they have another simpler superficial being, right? That they can simply point to and say, oh no, that's all I meant was just what the picture looks like. I didn't have any other hidden agenda or hidden meaning to it. And so this is what the internet has become in a way. And it's also sad that because we don't have face-to-face -face conversation, because we only know people through the internet, one of the problems might be that I might, uh, I don't know Toby Sumter personally, but I've watched enough of his public comments and I know enough of the people that he um, uh, hangs out with, right? His crew that I feel like I have some sense of who he is. Uh, and that then leads me to have like an impression that then causes me to immediately jump to these types of conclusions. They may be incorrect conclusions, but they're very hard to correct in this particular environment. Because again, like I said, for him to correct me, he'd have to specifically tell me I'm wrong, right? And even then, I'm not sure that I would believe that he was a, because I personally think that he believes that lying is fine. All right. If you're lying for a purpose, like if you're lying to somebody who you think doesn't have honorable intentions, well, that's just deception. That's godly deception. So we get into all these crazy circles where it becomes very difficult to know the truth. But my warning to Toby Sumter and his followers is if you didn't want this, if you truly didn't want this particular image being interpreted the way that I and many of my friends and other people I've shared this picture with do interpret it. If you didn't want it to be interpreted that way, then you need to say right up front, that's not what your intent was, right? Because you need to be aware that because of your background, because of the other things you associate yourself with, the other inflammatory things you say, because of all that baggage you have, if you go and post a picture like this, right, then you can expect it to be misinterpreted. I think it's not misinterpreted, but you can expect it to be interpreted in this fashion, right? Because you've brought that upon yourselves, right? You've brought that you don't, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. Whereas somebody who is um, a friend of mine who has never posted something that I would have ever thought I could interpret in this fashion. And maybe I even know that they play chess and so forth and they post this picture. I probably don't think of that first thing, right? I think through a bunch of other scenarios first before I'd ever allow myself to even go down that path of thinking that this was a racist picture, right? Had racist undertones to it. All right, so I don't know what the real interpret. I don't know what the real meaning of this particular picture is, but I found it an interesting example of uh, you reap what you sow, all right? Because I'm this is the way I'm going to interpret. This is the way many people are going to interpret uh, pictures like this. So that's the stuff I wanted to talk about. I just I'm, I you know it's just it's just an example of of the way the internet works these days the way that we can send messages, the way that we as the receiver of messages um, interpret those messages, right? Especially if we don't, if we don't know the person, right? Personally, and this, you know, usually we don't know individuals very personally. Um, usually we don't know individuals personally, right? It's, it's all through our perceptions of who's at the other end. And so I have a particular perception of Toby Sumter, and that's what leads me to very quickly interpret this particular message in this particular way. And I, I, I want to acknowledge again, I may be completely wrong uh, in my interpretation, um, but it's very hard to shake that particular interpretation once you've seen it 
And once you've, uh, uh, and especially since it matches up with the identity I have in my mind of the particular person that posted it. And so I guess that's a kind of a warning to everybody out there in terms of what you're putting out there on the internet, all right? The types of things you say build up an image of yourself. And for many people, they're building images of who they are that may not necessarily reflect who they are in person. Although in these days, I, I, you know, some people would say that in reality, the person you are in person is often guarded and careful and so forth with, with, your, with your close relationships. And then maybe the internet is where you actually expose who you really are, right? And so maybe it's the internet persona you have that's your real persona. But unfortunately, many people feel much more free on the internet to do things that they wouldn't do in person and don't share beliefs that they wouldn't share in person. And so don't be careful. You gotta, we all have to be careful what we say and what we do. And I tr I try, all right. I definitely have a bit of a persona on the internet because there's a lot of things I don't talk about on this channel that are part of me and who I am. Um, and so they're part of kind of a private life behind the scenes. And so you're only getting a glimpse of me. And besides, you really only hear me talk about young earth creationism and maybe evolutionary biology and these things that are. And so that's definitely shaped the that's definitely shaped the view that certain people have of me. Right. They that there are certain people out there that have very strong feelings about they think they know who I am. And I'm aware that that's a false view. Um, and there's only so much I can do about that because of the type of information I've put out there. So I do try to think about how to be authentic, you know, as I'm talking and relaying. That's part of the reason for this Duff Talk stuff is like I'm, I'm exploring my own thoughts and my own reactions to things that I see. And I'm just telling you how I think about them and how I'm processing that. And so that, that's the purpose of this video. All right, let's call it quits there. We'll talk some more stuff at another time. Thanks for listening. Oh, and watching. Bye. <laughs>